Okay, for this lesson, we're going to do something a little bit different. We're still going to be using the 12 bar blues form with a 1, 4, and 5 chord, but instead of using the traditional dominant 7th chords, we're going to use suspended chords, and in particular, 9 sus 4 chords. This is a kind of sound you might hear more associated with like jazz rock and fusion and that kind of thing, but it has a really interesting place in the blues. And also, you can use these chords on a standard 12 bar blues, especially for the turnaround part, which I'll get to in a little bit. So we're gonna be in the key of D, and so instead of playing a D7, or D9, which would be a standard uh, blues chord for a, for a regular 12 bar, we're gonna use this which is a D9 sus4. And the difference between the dominant 7 and the sus4 is this chord is more dreamy. It's less resolved. It's kind of open sounding, right? And it's not really pulling your ear as hard to the 4 chord as the dominant 7 does. So it has a different kind of mood. And it's particularly interesting when you come to play solos over this kind of thing as well. So how do we play a D9 sus4? Well, one way you can think of it is, it's a C chord with a D in the bass. And again, that has that kind of unresolved quality to it, right? So here, all I'm doing to do that is I'm just basically playing, um, I'm just barring my finger across the fifth fret. On the A string, we have D, which is our, uh, our root note of the chord. And then the next note on the D string fifth fret, we have G, and that's our fourth, which is replacing our third. You know, it would be this, but instead it's. So there's no third in these chords, right? So we have D and then G, and then on the fifth fret of the G string, we have C, which is our flat seven. And then we have E which is our ninth, because remember the ninth is the second note up an octave. So that, just those four strings there across the fifth fret, the A string, D string, G string, B string, that gives us D9 sus4, and that's gonna be the one chord of our blues, okay? Now our four chord is still following the same one, four, five pattern. So if, if D is one, then G is four, right? The fourth note is G. And so we want to stay in the same position. Like we could take that chord and go all the way up to G. But as you've learned by now in this course, we're not going to make that big a jump. We're going to try and keep the chords together, right? So for my G9 sus4, think about this. It's really F over G, right? And where can I see an F chord around there based out of the cage system? Well, I can see this. D shape F chord, right? Just like you could say I was playing the G shape C chord with that D in the bass, right? So if I see my F triad here, I need a G in the bass because G, it's a G9 sus4. So here's a G on the D string on the fifth fret. There's my G9 sus4, or if you like, F with G in the bass, right? So I'm playing the uh, fifth fret D string. There's my bass note G, the fifth note G string, that's the fourth of the chord, C, and then there's my um, F, which is my flat seven, and then there's A on the high E string, and that's my nine. So that is G9 sus4. So we have D9 sus4, going to G9 sus4, if you hear the bass underneath it, right? And then for the five chord, we're just gonna do the old up two frets trick, and we'll take that G9 sus4 and just move it up two frets for A9 sus4, based around the seventh fret D string A note. So we have the one chord, D9 sus4, we have the four chord, G9 sus4, and then we have A9 sus4 as the five chord. So that's our basic one, four, five chords, okay? lovely open sound. Now, to create a little bit of movement, so we're not just holding that one chord for the whole of the uh, D9 sus4 part of the blues, the one chord, we're going to play a little inversion here. And if you think about these notes, I could grab something like this. And I'm basically taking the same notes and just kind of rearranging them. E, G, D, G, because we've got those notes in our chord, right? So, 
kind of looks like a minor seven shape if you want to relate it to a shape, but really I'm just thinking about inverting this little chord. So let me show you how I'm fingering that because it's a little stretchier. I'm playing E on the A string at the seventh fret, G on the uh, fifth fret of the D string, and then I've got D on the uh, seventh fret of the G, and then finally A on the um, eighth fret of the B string. So yeah, and once again, as I've been saying through this course, in the context of say E minor seven, that would be an E minor seven chord, but in our context, it's a D9 sus4 because the bass below that is holding a D. The bass player holds the, hold the key to this stuff. So that would be how I might create movement there. D9 sus4, and then up and back, okay? And then same thing for the G9 sus4. I'm just gonna do this exact same thing, just move it down a string. And so how am I gonna voice that? I'm voicing it the seventh fret on the D string for the note A, fifth fret on the G string, the note C, and then I'm flattening my pinky, and you could use third and pinky if it's more comfortable, over the eighth fret to pick up the notes G and another C, right? So I'm just kind of repeating those that inversion. And then when I go up to the A9 sus4, it's gonna do the same thing, okay? And then back to the start. So not much to this one, other than the sound of these chords. These chords don't sound as traditional, uh, as traditionally bluesy. They have a more open sound to them and that can be refreshing. So in the practice session, I put together this track where we're just gonna play through the one, four, five using these voicings I just showed you and you can try locking in with the track.